Hello friends, this is Hedda. Welcome back to my channel and welcome back to another reading journal video. Today I'm going to take you through the spreads that I made in May, talking about the books that I read and the spreads that I made. I even have a little small business stationery haul in this video because I bought some stickers while I was in the US from American shops and then I also came back to some orders from European shops that I bought while I was away and since I am using some of those things that I bought in this video I thought I might as well do a little haul so that will be in the middle of the video somewhere the last spread you saw me make in my previous reading journal video was this cover page for May. I had room for four books, but I only read three, which is fine. I've actually been really busy in May, so it's not really that surprising. But what I'm really happy about this month is that one of these books actually goes in my reading challenge for 2022. Now it's been a few months since I filled in my challenge spread here. Let's see if I can find it. Here it is. The section that I filled in was for North America. I know I said I wanted to read a Canadian or a Mexican book for this challenge, but actually the first book that I read this month just had to go in this section because it was perfect, even though it is from the US. And that book is Educated by Tara Westover. I read Educated in the beginning of May and I was actually invited to a book club in Salt Lake by Suzanne. I have mentioned her before, she's one of my friends in Salt Lake that I met through Instagram. So she invited me to her book club with her family and the book we chose for May was Educated. Educated is a memoir, so a little bit different from what I normally read. This book has actually been recommended to me by another friend for a really long time. I was gonna borrow it from her, but then I never did and I went to the US and it just didn't work out. But I was really happy when this was on the list for the book club because I recognized it from my friend's bookshelf, but I didn't actually know what it was about. So I kind of went into it blindly. I hadn't heard of the Westover family before. Maybe if you're American, you will have heard of them, but as a European, I didn't really know anything about them. Educated is a memoir by Tara Westover, where she talks about her life growing up in a fundamentalist Mormon home in Idaho. And I thought it was actually really interesting to read a story that was set in the area I was in because she would go a lot back and forth between Idaho and Arizona and Utah growing up for various reasons and i knew that it was a memoir and i thought there would be like some traumatic stuff happening but i was not prepared for this book at all it kind of took me by surprise it was really good but it was really sad as well and after reading it i have read a bit more about the Westover family and I know that the mother has written her own memoirs because she doesn't agree with the way Tara Westover portrays the family and I haven't read that one I might do it but I'm kind of biased now after having read Tara Tara's version first but we'll see anyway Tara grows up with like a bunch of siblings and very religious parents but religious in a way that even their congregation sees them as kind of crazy people. I don't recognize very much of the beliefs that her father introduced them to in the kind of modern Mormonism that I see in Utah. But yeah, this book really shows how mental illness can badly affect the people around you and how harmful this fundamentalist religious belief is. And I don't know if this is like a controversial topic or anything, but my belief, and especially after reading this book, is that fundamentalist thinking is just so harmful and so backwards. And actually, it was really scary to read at times. And it was crazy to think that this is actual events that had happened, at least the way that she remembers the events. I'm sure there are some things that aren't exactly like that or things that she remembers wrong because 
she's talking about stuff that happened while she was a kid as well and I know for me at least I don't remember things very well from my childhood necessarily but her life is really impressive like how she managed to get into college without having any formal education being homeschooled and not really taught anything <laughs> like she learned to read but that was about it and I mean in a way it is a success story it is very inspiring how she managed to do that with her background and that makes me feel like I could also do anything you know I had just received my orders from Hawaii Co Record and from Wisco Bujo when I set up the spread so I really wanted to go for that vintage vibe so i used lots of different textured papers and stickers and everything and and instead of doing hand lettering for the title i wrote it in these like bubble letters i think it fit quite well with all of the rift book pages and the kind of vintage vibes that i have going on here i really like how the spread turned out and i mean the craft paper background definitely helps because it makes anything look more vintagey than it already does so i'm quite happy with how it turned out actually it doesn't necessarily fit the theme of the book but in a way it also kind of feels appropriate to have this kind of um, academia style spread for this because Tara Westover did go to university and she even got a doctorate which is even more impressive so I think it just goes to show that she is a really good writer and the book definitely has that going for it I haven't actually read that many memoirs, so I don't know how this book is compared to other memoirs, really. But I really enjoyed it. I mean, it was awful to read at times. It was quite depressing, really sad, but also like an incredible story and really good writing. So I think that's what I took away from it. And the reason why I decided to include it into my challenge for this year is that although I have read a lot of books by American authors, especially this year. I do find that this book is very different because it is by an author who grew up in a very different environment than most Americans do. And she had a very different childhood from most Americans. But also, I don't think that her story is unique because I'm sure there are many people like her and many people who don't get out of that toxic environment and so I think it is a very important book and I would definitely recommend it. Now I know that was a bit dark so let's move on to a bit of a happier topic, um, my stationery haul. The first thing that I got was from Peppercut Studio or Julianne Doodles. Julianne is so sweet, I consider her one of my good friends in the bullet journal community and her stickers are just adorable so I can't wait to make some spreads with her stickers. I also got stickers from Leela Journals, another friend. Artie is so sweet and she sent me a bunch of extra stickers with my order which was so nice of her. Her style is just so unique and one of my favorite stickers from everything that I bought are these like frame stickers. They're so cool, like the whole sheet is just a bunch of frames. I really love her art style and they were just perfect for my June cover page in my reading journal so you will see me make that spread at the end of this video. Next up is something that was waiting for me in my P.O. box when I got back to Oslo and this is an order from Takti. If you've been following me for a while you will have seen me make a review of a Takti notebook in the past. I do have an affiliate agreement with them and they did send me these stickers for free to try out which was really nice of them but this notebook I actually bought myself. This is a limited edition notebook and it's hand bound in Croatia and the paper is made in Germany so it's really special. It has white dot grid pages and in Takti notebooks you can choose between 120 pages and 240 pages. I have actually two notebooks from them already with 240 pages so I really wanted to try the 120 one. It's really light and slim, it feels really nice in my hand and the quality is just so good and the little ribbon that you close it with is really cute so I'm really happy with my purchase. I do have an affiliate code with Takti, it is Muchibujo10 and it gives you 10% off your order. 10% goes a long way 
play with these notebooks because they are quite pricey but considering that they're handmade and made sustainably in Europe it really makes it worth it Next up, I have my order from Sleepy House Lion. I think I was one of the first people to order from Lisa after she opened her shop. I was just so excited for her. It's so fun when people in the bullet journal community opens uh, new sticker shops. So these are some stickers that I got from her. I think I got almost all the stickers that she released in her shop launch, so that's fun. So definitely go check out her shop. I think she has a lot of fun things in store for the rest of the year. And the last order I got is from Marigona Suli Art and you will have seen me use a lot of her stuff in the past. I just really love her art style and this time I got double of almost every sheet that I bought because these are just so great for my reading journal, for my bullet journal, for pen pal letters. So I got a lot of different things this time, I got some like memo pad stickers and lots of like cottage core and summary sticker sheets so really happy with these this is yet another small business i would highly recommend all in all super happy with everything that i got and it was so fun to come back and just find all of this in my PO box and now we can get started on the next spread that i made in my reading journal which was for the second book that i read in may and this one is yerba buena by nina lacour I did mention this book in my previous reading journal video because this is one of the books that Book of the Month sent me last month. I did a collaboration with them for my previous reading journal video showing the book selection that they had for May. And this video is not sponsored by any of the businesses mentioned by the way, but I will say that I really like Book of the Month and how you can get a book every month for a cheaper price and they are so nice i really loved working with them once again i did not read the blurb of this book before i started reading it one of my thrills in life is to just start reading books without knowing what they're about so that's what i did with this book i had heard of nina lacour before but this is actually her first book for adults because she usually writes young adult novels but this one was for adults and it was such a sweet love story between two women and it was kind of alternating between um, their perspectives kind of starting from when they're young teenagers and then until they're um, young adults or I don't know how long you are considered a young adult, but I would say like until you're 30, you're a young adult. <laughs> or maybe that's just me wanting to be a young adult. It was really sad at times. It does touch upon like drug abuse and death and depression. So it's definitely not a light story, but it was a really good one. It also touches a bit on identity and just growing up and kind of figuring out who you are and what you want to be and what you want to do and I definitely saw myself a lot in some of the characters like that feeling of not really knowing what you're doing in life and it was really horrible at times too like awful things happen in these women's lives and the story is kind of about them overcoming those things or maybe not so much overcoming them but like accepting that it is what it is and accepting that their families are not going to be perfect and that the adults in their lives are just people like them um, and I thought that was a really beautiful part of this book it definitely made me reflect a lot on my own life and my own relationships so I'm really glad that I, I read this one the third and last book that I read during May which I just barely finished by the end of the month was Tower of Dawn by Sarah J Maas. This is the sixth book in the Throne of Glass series. You know I've been making my way through this series this year and this is the sixth book. This is a really fun spread to work with because it's right in between two signatures so we have craft paper on one side and black paper on the other. I kind of wanted to keep the craft paper thing going though so I 
used some craft paper from one of my notebook therapy notebooks, which is spiral bound. So I just ripped that out of the notebook and then I cut it to fit better on this page and glued it in. My notebook is a Neapolitan notebook from Archer and Olive. It has white craft and black paper. And I just think it's really fun because you get the variety without using different notebooks so 10 out of 10 would recommend <laughs> i do have an affiliate code with archer and olive it's mochibujo 10 it gives you 10 percent off any purchase there's a link in the description box if you want to check them out so with this spread i kind of went for red and pink and browns i used some stickers from sleepy house lion and also some stickers that lena sent me in her last pen pal letter to me i think this girl sticker is from hippie post i will try to put a link in the description box as well because they are really nice so let's talk about tower of dawn i will try to not spoil anything because it is the sixth book in the series so a lot of things have happened at this point. I really liked the fifth book um, and I thought that maybe I wouldn't like the sixth book as much because everyone's talking it down and nobody likes Kale and <laughs> yeah I was like kind of worried it would be boring. It is really long, it's almost 700 pages but actually I really liked it. Of course I am kind of eager to start the seventh book um, because the sixth book does feel a little bit like... I mean it is kind of a different story because it kind of happens at the same time as the fifth book but like on a different continent. So it's definitely different and different characters and everything but I really liked it and I kind of grew to like some of the characters more it also introduces a bunch of new characters, which is what this series is all about. For some reason, just trying to confuse you with a million different characters. Kind of Game of Thrones style in a way. <laughs> but I actually really enjoyed it and I think I really like fantasy books where there is an adventure, where there is like travels and discovering new lands and new people and new traditions. And that's one thing that I really like about some fantasy books so this is actually perfect i understand why people don't really like kale and doesn't really enjoy reading from kale's perspective i was also very annoyed with kale at times but i really enjoyed the character development and i enjoyed seeing more of nezrin and irene was an interesting character Although she didn't feel very unique to the Throne of Glass universe, if that makes sense. But yeah, I am really excited to get started on the seventh book. I don't know if I will read it in June. I might take another break again because I did find that I enjoyed it a lot more when I didn't just like jump from one book to the next because a lot happens in them and the fourth and fifth book i read like back to back and now i'm kind of confused as to what happened in each of them because <laughs> they're kind of mixed in my brain but yeah i will say the same thing that i said last time when i read the fifth book and that is that the series gets better and better and i think that you need to really stick it out through the first and maybe even the second book and then it just gets really good from there so yeah that was my monthly dose of fantasy and then all that is left is to set up my cover page for june and you can tell my journal is really chunky at this point but it is actually only my second black signature in this notebook so there's still plenty of room left and like I mentioned earlier, I used a bunch of stickers from Leela Journals in the spread. I also used this girl sticker from Hippie Post and then some other scrap paper and scrapbooking paper. This one that I am cutting out right here is from Notebook Therapy. So what I did is I cut out a piece of this paper to 
use as like a background inside of the frame. So I cut it to be a little bit smaller than this frame sticker from Leela Journals. And then I just built everything on top of that frame. So I used some stickers and I used a lot of cloud stickers. Those were really fun. And I put the moon kind of in the top here with the girl sticker kind of on the side. And then I didn't really have a plan after this. So I just kind of stuck the stickers wherever they fit and also ripped some paper from pages out of old books. The thing about Artie's style is that it's so dainty and so detailed. Really thin lines, really delicate colors. So it was really fun to work with this on top of the black paper because I think that that really let her artwork shine. So I am very happy with my choice to use her stickers for this cover page. I did a simple title with my Sakura jelly roll here. Um, just really simple and small. I didn't think a big elaborate title would really fit with the rest of the spread because of hardy stickers, but I did draw some like sparkles and everything to kind of bind everything together. And then on the left side, I have some frames with room for books that I'm reading in June. I've only put in three because I don't actually think that I will read more than three books in June but we'll see. As always, if I do read more, I can just put in another frame or just like write two books inside of one frame or something. So it wouldn't be the end of the world. I don't like to overthink these things, just kind of make what makes sense. I think most of these frames were sent to me by Lena from Witsko Bujo. I did mention earlier that I placed an order from her Etsy shop and it's basically just like a mix of a bunch of stationery. So not stuff that she has designed herself, but it's more like stationery that she has curated and put together. And then you get like a surprise box or folder with lots of different stuff. And I really like that because there is so much pretty stationery out there, but it can get really expensive and when you buy a curated selection, you get like a little bit of everything. And I really like that. Um, you might notice that I'm using my X-Acto knife to split my stickers from the backing paper. And that is because a lot of these are die cut stickers. And when you wear press on nails like I do, your nails are a little bit thicker than normal nails. So it is really hard to get your nails in between the sticker and the backing paper. Um, so I use my X-Acto knife instead and you definitely need to be careful so you don't cut yourself, but I'm an adult so, uh, you know, <laughs> I know how to handle an X-Acto knife. But yeah, that is it for the spreads in this video. You will have noticed that I didn't fill in all of the spreads after I made them and that's because I filled them in later, which you know, it just happens sometimes. But here is a flip through of all of the spreads that I made in this video so that you can get a closer look on the kind of end result. I actually think that all of these spreads go together quite well, which wasn't my intention, it just happened. I really like all of the browns and the beige and the kind of pink, reddish stuff that's going on in a lot of these spreads. So I am really happy with how they turned out. I also really like that I read very varied books this month. I read a memoir, I read literary fiction, and I read a fantasy novel. And you know, it doesn't get better than that. <laughs> I think variety is very important. And it's something that I'm not very good at all the time because fantasy is great. <laughs> And that's all I have for you today. I really hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to like and subscribe and also put a black emoji in your comment to show that you watched it all the way to the end, kind of symbolizing this black spread. Because if you didn't watch the video to the end, you wouldn't have watched me set up this beautiful cover page for June. As always, you can find me on Instagram and TikTok and my Patreon. Thank you again so much for watching this video. I really appreciate it. I hope that you're all having a lovely day and I'll see you next time. Bye!